Hi, my name is Kay and welcome to Kalamay. When I chose the name for the business, when I was making a choice, when I was deciding for it, I looked at the possibilities for the brand to be recognized, not just in Cabancalan. It's in Negros, and we are the sugar capital of the Philippines. Bringing Kalamay here in Cabancalan is something that has always been in my vision. I want people to experience something in this city that they don't really have to travel too far for. So you don't have to go to Bacolod just to have something nice because not everyone has the opportunity to really travel, especially at this time. Kalamay is something that is accessible for everyone. It's a humble name. It's easy to remember. It's very Ilonggo. When I chose Kalamay, I said that's the core ingredient in pastry. When you think of Kalamay, it's sweet and we're doing something really sweet here. I was almost turning 11 when we went to the UK. It was just me, my mom, my dad, and I. Ang ako nga siblings, they were left here in the Philippines. Growing up in the UK, it was just three of us the whole time and then uh, in my school I was the only Asian girl. He is the youngest in the family so um, we're only two sisters and we have one brother and we're like five years apart. We both grew up in a busy home, a busy kitchen. We love food, we love to eat so even though we have um, opposite interests, opposite tastes, in some of the other things, but in food, we have uh, totally the same likes. That's why we plan to put up this kind of business to bring the, the British taste to Kabangkalan. I was going to study sciences, preparatory for medicine. It's a very typical Asian thing. You're either a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, or something else. It's like old-fashioned thinking. When my best friend who wanted to do art inquired into the university and then we found out the art building is right across the culinary building. So I decided that I'll um, roll myself for two weeks into cooking. So I did that and then ended up really enjoying it and I decided that um, that's what I wanted to do. And my parents didn't know at the very beginning they were skeptical about my decision because they think I was just having fun. I was actually having a really good time. My dad said, I'll give you a year and you'll change your mind. And then 10 years later, I'm doing it, so. Because it's something that you have to have the heart to do. You, you can't go into a career thinking about just for the money. When you're a chef, you don't get paid a lot in the beginning. It's pure hard work. I would turn up from work or from college, having burns and cuts. I think this is worth it. So I just keep on pushing and then I said that I'm not changing my mind. So, so my decision when I was 16, is still, I'm still gonna stick with it. So it's still, I'm still here. So before I was a student, I was just a student. Before I was in the shop, so, I was in the class of everyday life. 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 I was in the class Kami nang na-assign sa mag-scale, magbutang sa mga flour, kag, mga buttercream, kami naman ko, bra. Bra, tapos doon damo man siya ginapatilo. <laughs> eh, damo man siya, pero may bago na ginaluto mo. Eh, malingaw kagida sa mga namit-namit daan. 
I studied in one of the colleges in Oxford. I did pastry, the main kitchen, which is the savory side of the kitchen. I also did the front of house. I did some short courses in Culinary Institute of America in New York, in Hyde Park. And then after, I started applying for jobs. So being a pastry chef hasn't always been in my plans. Um, it was very accidental. After my studies, my first job was at Waldorf Astoria. We didn't have any days off for two months. And then after that, I was a really young, passionate kid. So when I applied for the job, I didn't have any experience at all. On the year where I was working for that company, there's a chocolatier 30 minutes away from my workplace. He's called William Curley, one of the best chocolatiers in the UK. I emailed him saying, Chef, I really admire you and your work. I want to learn from you. I'll work for you for free. I just want to learn. So I did that for a year and a half. I didn't have any days off. I get paid so little and then I would work for free and I get given chocolate as payment. Money wasn't the most important thing for me, even, even until now. I just wanted to have that experience. I want to learn. And then I applied for another company, um, which is just in my hometown in Oxford. But my colleagues told me that, you know what, take Gordon Ramsay because, you know, he's more famous. I was the only girl in the kitchen. I was really young. I think I was uh, 19 or 20 when, when I got there, you know, I, you have all these big guys working in the kitchen and just so small, small you know, Asian girl. I think it, I wouldn't be hardworking as I am now if I didn't go through that kitchen because even if I worked at three Michelin stars, that kitchen is still going to be the hardest. Surviving that built my confidence. We feed, we feed celebrities, we feed the queen, princesses, princesses from UAE. We meet like Tom Cruise and everyone. You know, meeting those kind of people that everyone knows, it builds your character as well, it builds your confidence. So later on in life, you're not starstruck anymore, you're not so faced with anything. So I joined the UK Pacers team as a mentee. A mentee is someone the competitors train themselves. So we will be the next one to compete for the UK. Afterwards, I started doing my individual competition. So I did the Royal Academy of Culinary Arts, which is an award given to pastry chefs. My boss signed me up for another an international chocolate chef competition held in Versailles in France. I was only 24. It was a very quick journey for me because I worked twice as hard as everyone else. I worked for another year and then I got an offer in Australia. It was an island in Great Barrier Reef called Hayman Island. I went there as an executive pastry chef. Then after my Australian journey, I went back to the UK and I applied for the Fat Duck, which is a Michelin star and awarded a world's best restaurant. I got in and I supervised the main prep kitchen for pastry. And then six months later, I moved on to being a chocolatier. The restaurant is only 40 covers. We were 45 chefs, 30 waiters. So that's where I really honed my chocolate making skills. After a while being in the countryside, you kind of feel like it's too laid back and you want something even more. It's always been in my plans to come home anyway. So that's when I decided that, no, I think I have nowhere else to go in the UK. I've done, I've ticked off all the boxes that I wanted to work at, people I wanted to work for. It's something that, uh, what am I going to do next? So I said, I think it's time to go to the Philippines. <laughs> so that's it. I always envisioned it to be an English cafe because I go back to the UK once in a while and then I have totally immersed myself in the British culture and I really wanted the people here in Kabangkalan to experience the British food that is very simple, very straightforward, very hearty, very filling, yet very affordable. Change our menu almost every week. So I've prepared something nga half of it would be Filipino and half of it would be European. We have peach mango pie, but it's not your usual peach mango pie. Chocolate, goose cake in there, it's a mixture of Davao chocolate, dalandan raspberry and strawberry and then we have obviously the Basque burn cheesecake i'm very proud of this as well because people can really taste the quality 
we have a selection of cupcakes. Our cupcakes changes. I don't have a timeline for it, but when I want to change it, we change it. Our kalamai from Victoria's. Muscovado Sugar from Agricultural School, CPSU. I obviously get the fresh produce, like carrots for carrot cakes, eggs from my uncle's farm. Anything that I can get seasonally, like fruits. So every now and then, I would visit the market. European palates, they tend to lean into the balance of taste. So you have the sweet, the sour, the salt. But here in Negros, we really love sweets. They asked me if you can do something of of heritage, I said, we all love piaya here. And I'm not going to do ube, because ube is everywhere in the Philippines, but Muscovado is from us here in Negro. That's what I'm going to do today, Muscovado piaya. But it's going to be in a bonbon. So it's a mixture of Philippines and the skill I learned abroad. When we opened our doors for a collection of orders, they haven't really tried this kind of style of food nga may sari-sari iba lang kakatabo sa imong baba and then when they do they they really like it and they come back for more we won't be mass producing whatsoever we will never do that we will focus on quality over quantity. We're just starting. We haven't opened yet. We haven't fully opened yet. We will fully open in January next year. For now, it's the lingaw-lingaw pa lang. Pinakaninjoyan ko ang upod ko sila. Kay Isabella, ito. Ako lang bila isaw. Di kundere, may mga upod ko maka-interact ko. If you're cooking for the public, you're you're giving away a piece of yourself every single time. So you have to love what you're doing. From a business perspective, it's really good to branch out because you'll reach a lot more people. But mostly, this is for Kabantalan. 